You have learned about aerodynamics, aircraft systems, weather, weather services, all different types of navigation. Now we're going to put it together to let you go on your first cross-country flight with your instructor. We'll be using um, the Atlanta sectional and we're going to make a flight, a cross-country flight plan out from Greenville, Golf Mike Uniform to Columbia, South Carolina, Charlie Alpha Echo. There are many steps to cross-country flight planning and it's easiest if you use some sort of navigation log as you see here. The navigation log allows you to write in your checkpoints, write down the winds to help you calculate out the distance, speed, and time, and fuel burn between each checkpoint. In addition, you're going to want to be able to calculate out the weight and balance, and then take off and landing distance data, and write down all your weather. Because there's so many steps involved in cross-country flight planning, I've made out a 1 through 20 step-by-step -step that we'll use to calculate out our cross-country flight plan from Greenville, South Carolina to Columbia, South Carolina. In addition, I've put some commonly used abbreviations on the bottom of the page that you can refer to if you need to. Now all three of these sheets will be available to you by clicking on the link below in the description. All right, let's begin step number one. It says to calculate out our weight and balance. In order to calculate out our weight and balance, we have to write down the empty weight. The weight and balance will be the most current copy available out of the maintenance logs or wherever your flight school may keep them. But be sure that you use the newest empty weight and the newest moment. So in this example, the newest empty weight is 1,687.76 pounds. And we don't really need the arm because we're basically after the total weight and the total moment. And since we have the moment here, 67,385, uh, we're going to move the decimal three places and make it 67.4. The reason that we do that is because the POH charts that we're going to use have already divided all the moments by 1,000 and we want to keep our numbers the same to make our addition easier. So for the moment, we're going to use 67.4. Now let's say that we have pilot and front seat passenger. We will call them 300 pounds. And in the rear seat, we'll put 100 pounds there. And the baggage, we'll put 25 pounds in baggage A. So we have a baggage A and a baggage E in this particular air, uh, baggage B in this particular airplane, but we're just going to put this in baggage A. And we're going to try to go with fuel topped off. And in this Cessna 172, it holds a maximum of 56 gallons, but 53 usable. Remember in the prior videos uh, where I was instructing you how to calculate out weight and balance, we said that the basic empty weight includes or almost always includes the unusable oil or all the oil depending on the aircraft as well as the unusable fuel. So we're only going to use the 53 gallons. Remember we have to multiply it times 6 because that's the weight of a gallon of fuel and we end up with 318 pounds. The oil in this aircraft is included in the basic empty weight. So we have the basic empty weight. We have 300 pounds in the pilot front seat. We have 100 pounds in the rear seat, 25 pounds in baggage A, and 318 pounds for the weight. If we add all of these up, we end up with 2,430.76. Now, like I said, um, sometimes you will have to calculate out, if, if the arm is given and you have to calculate out, the weight times the arm equals the moment. But Cessna gives us a nice little graph that we can use so we don't have to do that extra math. So what we're looking at here is 300 pounds in the front seat. So this column up the side is our weight in pounds, and the bottom is our moment, which has been divided by 1,000 pounds. The pilot in front seat, 300 pounds. So I go up this, the side here, find 300, and then go across until I see the line that says pilot in front seat. And it looks like it is about... 11. So our moment for the pilot in front seat will be 11.0.
Now it appears we're taking someone as a passenger that weighs 100 pounds. So we will go up the side and find 100 pounds. Go across until we find the one that says rear passengers. And it looks like it is sitting at about seven. So our moment for the rear passengers will be 7.0. And then now we're on to the baggage. Baggage is 25 pounds. So we run up the side to find 25 pounds. And note there is a baggage one and a baggage two. We have it in the forward baggage area, so it'll be baggage one. So we come up about 25 pounds and go across, and it looks like it's about 2.5. So 2.5 is our moment for the baggage. There's no oil that we calculate in for this particular weight imbalance. And then our fuel for our 318 pounds we go up 318 pounds and we come across and this makes sense. We topped off so we're at the top of our fuel line here and it looks like it, if we bring this down, it looks like it's right at about 15.5. So our moment for the fuel is 15.5. Now if we add up all of these moments, we end up with 103.4. Okay, so now we have the total weight, 2,430 pounds, and the total moment, 103.4. We can take this one step forward, one step further if we need to, to get the CG, the actual center of gravity. The moment, total moment, remember we had divided this by 1,000, so this is actually 103,400 divided by 2,430. 0.76, and then we would get an actual center of gravity of 42.5. With the Cessna 172, that step actually wasn't necessary because the graph that Cessna provides for us, to be sure that we're in the category, the normal or utility category envelope, this graph asks for the total weight and the total moment. But some aircrafts have a graph where it asks for the total weight and the center of gravity. And therefore, you would have to do that last step. But for Cessna, we didn't really have to. We just run up the side for the weight, 2,430, which is going to be about right here. We go across, and then we take our 103.4 and come up. And it looks like we're right about here. Which, is nicely placed, uh, which nicely places us in the normal category. We're definitely not over max gross weight because for this particular airplane, it looks like uh, 2,550, and if we read in the POH, they also allow an additional seven pounds for a ramp weight, which we would expect to burn off prior to takeoff. So that completes our weight imbalance. We're ready to continue to the next step.